Today, Indian announced a brand new special edition of their FTR 1200 flat track street bike called the FTR Carbon. So in today's video, we'll take a look over all of the details of this beautiful motorcycle, as well as taking the stunning imagery that they've released. But before we get started, if you're new here and you want to see more of the latest bike launches and motorcycle news, then please do remember to hit subscribe. Here's a bit of background about the FTR 1200 first in case you're not already familiar. It takes a great deal of its inspiration from Indian's FTR 750 race bike which has been prolific in American flat track racing with three grand national titles in a row. In 2017, Indian released the FTR 1200 custom concept which added a bit more capacity and street legal equipment to the race bike before the full production model finally surfaced in 2019. The 1203 c CC liquid cooled 60 degree V twin is somewhat related to their Scout engine, although Indian claim that only 20% of the parts are in common with 80% new for the FTR. It packs a decent punch with a peak power of 123 horsepower and a peak torque of 87 foot pounds or 118 newton meters at 6,000 RPM. Combined with a reasonable wet weight of 226 kilograms, it's more than enough for a bit of fun on the street. Brakes come in the form of 320mm rotors with radially mounted Brembo M4.32 calipers paired with a Brembo radial master cylinder for plenty of stopping power at the front. On the S model, fully adjustable 43mm upside down forks and a fully adjustable rear shock, both manufactured by Saks, should make for a bike that handles too. And the electronics are up there with any 2020 premium naked sports bike with a Bosch IMU that enables cornering traction control and ABS. There's also engine braking control, cruise control, a 4.3 inch TFT touchscreen dash with Bluetooth phone connectivity, a USB charging port and LED lighting both front and rear. I was fortunate enough to ride the FTR 1200S recently after I borrowed one for a day from Crazy Horse London. Personally, I loved how aggressive it felt, especially when you consider that it's built by a company that primarily makes tourers, cruisers and bobbers. The engine has plenty of torque low down, but when you wind it up to 5000 RPM and above, it really comes alive and has more than enough rush to keep you entertained. The brakes are excellent, and although the suspension is pretty firm, it's a sharp handling bike because of it, as well as the underseat fuel tank keeping the centre of gravity low. The riding position takes a little getting used to with a sporty high seat and pegs and wide tracker bars making it somewhat of a hybrid. The throttle is a bit choppy especially in sport mode and the rear wheel doesn't have the most grip on a relatively narrow semi knobbly tyre but combined with the styling some of these flat track inspired features give it bags of character. There's no other bike on the market like the FTR and that's what I really enjoyed about it. If you haven't seen that full review already there's a link to that video in the description. The best way that I can describe the FTR Carbon immediately is to imagine Triumph's TFC treatment on the FTR 1200. Triumph have added carbon bodywork as well as improved equipment and specs to their Rocket, Thruxton and Bobber to create elevated special editions which offer a more premium product than their base production counterparts. And that's exactly what Indian have done here, adding carbon bodywork and a top spec exhaust to create something even more special than their existing existing range topper, the FTR 1200S race replica. The FTR Carbon features carbon fibre tank covers, although the fuel tank is under the seat so these actually cover the airbox. The headlight nacelle is also carbon, as is the front mudguard and passenger seat cowl. All of this carbon bodywork reminds me of the FTR 1200 custom concept which was absolutely dripping in it. In fact, perhaps it was a little too much, especially around the headlight. The FTR carbon looks like a more tasteful compromise. There's also a blacked out version of the Akropovich low mounted exhaust which looks extra sleek compared to the natural titanium finish used on the race replica. As with the RR version, the exhaust comes with a carbon heat shield too. Lastly, there's some carbon branding and red lettering in the center console which is a nice finishing touch. I wouldn't want anything too garish here, but the grey carbon logo on black background is sufficiently subtle. These extra touches are all on top of the spec of the race replica version so this really is the most premium FTR you can buy. To my eye the carbon looks grey and really gives it that race ready look. 
The FTR Carbon is available in dealers immediately, costing £14,699. I reckon that seems fairly reasonable when you consider that Triumph's TFC bikes are typically about five grand more expensive than their production base models. Perhaps this bike doesn't go quite as far in terms of upgrades, but that's because the FTR 1200S race replica already has Brembo's fully adjustable suspension and a comprehensive suite of electronics. For reference, the base FTR costs 11,899. The FTR 1200 S with TFT dash, better suspension, riding modes, and lean sensitive rider aids comes in at 12,999. And then the race replica, which adds the red painted frame and FTR 750 style panels and the Akropovich exhaust, is 14,099 pounds. So an extra 600 quid for all that carbon fiber bodywork really isn't bad at all, especially when you consider that if you buy carbon tank cover as an accessory for the race replica, they're £454. The carbon front mudguard is just shy of 250 quid, and the seat cowl £325. So that's over a grand of extras already, and that's without the headlight nacelle and the race replica paint job. Often people complain about production bikes not being close enough to the concepts upon which they're based, but the FTR Carbon looks more similar to the FTR 1200 custom concept. Probably as close as you can possibly get while still adhering to homologation requirements and production practicalities. What do you guys reckon to this carbon version of the FTR 1200? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I think it adds a touch of class to an already great looking bike. Hopefully once this lockdown is over, I'll be able to get out on one and tell you how it looks in the flesh, but do let me know what you think of it. I always enjoy reading your comments. And if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll catch you next time.